This is 3D printing. It prints objects in three-dimensional space, just like how you and I see the world. This is great for prototypes and hobbyists who are looking to build different parts. Call me crazy, but I think this might be the solution to saving people millions on their homes. The problem is, these machines, they only print things that can fit on your desk. We need something that's gonna be able to print an entire home. What if I told you that the future of building is faster and cheaper than ever before? For robots and printers? No, this isn't sci-fi. This is happening right now. This technology isn't just for bragging rights. It's solving real problems, reducing waste, speeding up timelines, and opening up new possibilities for affordable housing. But first, we need to understand what 3D printing actually is. Oh, and by the way, this isn't a real knife. It's um, 3D printed. A machine builds an object layer by layer from a digital file. You start with a 3D model, then use slicing software to convert it into layered instructions the printer follows. There are typically three types of 3D printing. FDM, or fused deposition modeling, melts plastic filament and deposits it into layers. This is great for prototypes and hobbyists who are looking to build different parts. SLA, or stereolithography, uses light to cure resin for very, very fine details. SLS, or selective laser sintering, fuses powdered material for strong functional parts. Prototyping for product development, custom medical devices, dental work, architectural models, tooling, props, jewelry, and fashion, these are just some of the fields that you'll find 3D printed objects. Across the globe, companies are experimenting with large-scale 3D printers that create walls, floors, and even whole communities. Traditional building methods are slow, labor-intensive, and wasteful. 3D printing can radically cut costs and timelines, building in days instead of months. Imagine printing a house in a week for a fraction of the cost, or printing a shelter in a disaster zone. The stuff I showed you earlier, these printers, they can't do this. But let's take a look at something that actually can. Large-scale 3D printing works much like small-scale printing, layer by layer from a digital design. But the difference is much, much bigger machines. First up, the robotic crawler system. These are mobile printers that I think are giant robot scorpions on tracks. I'm referencing the maxi printer here at the moment. Now, unfolded, it measures up to 3.85 meters tall. Its nozzle and components are much bigger than the printers that I mentioned before this. It has a built-in laser for repositioning, so it can print vertical walls, poles, and even street furniture. It uses specifically formulated micro-concrete that's designed for large structures. Next, the gantry printer. These are some of the largest 3D printers available. Now picture a giant frame that moves on rails. It's kind of similar to our tabletop printers. Now at the time of this video, the world's largest construction 3D printer is from Cobot. It measures 50 meters long, 30 meters wide, and 15 meters high. Now, if you think about that, that's roughly the same size as a Boeing 737's hangar. It can produce an entire house in one pass. Doors, windows, and everything. Finally, robotic arm printers. Picture a giant robotic arm that extrudes concrete. They can create complex curving shapes that are limited by reach. Around the globe, people like Antoine Mott of Construction 3D, Jason Bowen of Icon, and Lee Newman of Printera are making it happen. So why haven't we seen it take off here yet? Today, I'm visiting Printera, a Canadian company at the forefront of this revolution. I met with Lee at the site, where he's building a record-breaking structure, and I picked his brain to learn how I can incorporate his tech into my own six-story apartment and get it approved. I've got a building that we're looking at building in Toronto. It's six stories, um, and I'm looking for the best tech that I can find. And right now, one of the things that I'm really highly anticipating working with is 3D printing. But I have absolutely no idea where to start with this. You're leading the charge in 3D printing. Honestly, just tell me everything. You know, where do you start? Um, it's been a long path for us to get here, you know what I mean? So 3D printing isn't new to the world, but it's definitely new in Canada. So 
the first step was permitting and regulatory was the issue, right? We already know the technology can be used. It's being used globally. Here in Canada, it's been used on small scale, but never on a scale of a site to be three stories. So that's the first portion. It really comes down to regulatory permitting, standard development. So all of the research that needs to be done in order for us to validate our wall system to get permits. So that's the most crucial component to using this tech. He's alluding to the fact that this is absolutely impossible to get because in order for you to get certifications on a certain product, you have to have it approved. He will be the first person in Canada to have the approval to be able to print a structural building out of 3D printing. Up till now, it's just been veneer walls. And so now I'm assuming that's because 3D printing is pretty much not allowed in Canada, or is it? Innovative technology can be used in Canada if it is comparable to an existing methodology of construction. For example, our walls are designed following the masonry code, and all of the testing that we've been doing and got done is showing how our wall performs in comparison to masonry. So there are similarities in their design. I was investigating some other technology a little while ago, but I've heard a rumor that 3D printing's actually been around since like the 1930s as well? The late 30s to be exact. So yes, the technology is not new. The automation of it, you know, and the BIM modeling and all of that, that has been new. But the actual concept of taking a material, mixing it mechanically, and extruding it was done in the late 30s. Frontera's work in Windsor, Ontario, led me to a university lab where their partners test and refine this tech. And I got to meet with a man with an epic name, Dr. Daz. Dr. Daz and his research team are leading Canada's deep dive into 3D printed concrete construction. Inside one of the country's largest full-scale structural engineering labs, they're developing and testing the materials and methods that could redefine how we build. Dr. Daz's lab studies every layer of a printed wall, how the concrete flows, how each bead bonds, and how those layers perform under real-world loads, under compression, wind, and temperature changes. The research goes beyond theory. This same team helped produce Canada's first 3D printed multi-unit residential home in partnership with Habitat for Humanity and Windsor Essex. They printed entirely on site using a standard concrete mix rather than an expensive proprietary mortar. That single change made the process faster, cheaper, and scalable for real housing projects. They are also developing sustainable concrete mixes that reduce cement content and lower carbon emissions while maintaining the strength needed for safe, code-compliant structures. And as part of a new campus initiative, Dr. Daz is now planning Canada's first 3D printed student residence. It's a collaboration that's giving Canada a leadership role in additive construction and opening the door to faster, cleaner, and more affordable housing. Now this lab is amazing. And obviously it has every single bell and whistle you can imagine to test. Yes. So what led you into 3D printing and the plight to get it approved in Canada? So what happened, um we, me, and my research team have been investigating how to use this technology to minimize the housing crisis we are going through. And looking at my own case, I believe they would not be able to own a house, and that's very sad news. So I saw, okay, modular research, modular housing, I've been doing that for the last 15, 20 years, who has the potential to solve some of the housing crisis, but it needs a big investment, right? You need a setup, it's a factory setup, it's a, it's a millions, if not billions of dollars you need. Then I found the 3D printing technology is not that uh, capital in intensive. Uh, any small company can buy printers, start printing small houses. So that's how we got into this. Then during pandemic, what happened when we needed more isolation home for separation, you know, for the people who got the COVID and, uh, to separate them from others. Then I thought this technology would have been the best one to go and print the houses very quick. Uh, that's how we got into this technology, I would say about seven, eight years ago. So what I'm, why I'm here right now is, is to, to figure out what is the best technology to use to build a six-story low-income housing building. We've already purchased the land, we've already got things organized, and I'm looking for technology now that's going to work, which is why I've come here to Windsor, and I need to be convinced that this is something that I could potentially work with. Now, when you mentioned something which was really intriguing to me was that a, a builder like myself, who's really not done something like this before, could relatively buy a printer for somewhat an inexpensive amount, comparatively, and then be able to pick this product up and start using it. That's intriguing to me. 
Tell me a little bit more about that. 3D printing can also be done modular. It can be done on site and modular. Right now, as you probably know, the, the printer can go all the way up to three story, maybe three and a half story high. We don't have any printer that can go beyond this uh, at this moment. It doesn't mean it will not happen in five years. Technology is moving very fast. We can also use the 3D printing as a modular, so we can possibly print three-story high house in the on site. Then we can make the rest of the parts in printed in the factory, and then you, you build as a modular on top of that. Dr. Daz introduced me to Marcos, Director of Engineering at Printera. He explained to me how the materials work and how it's even possible to print with concrete. I'm looking at some 3D printing here right now. How can I use this on my building? That's a very good question because what you see here, this is a concrete piece, right? Concrete is a material that we know for a long time already, right? It's not a new material, right? What is new about this thing is the way we deploy the concrete, right? So we are using automation to produce this component, right? So the level of labor, like manual labor that you see in front of you is very reduced because now we are using automation. We are using a machine that controls uh, the speed of the deployment, how much concrete I want to deploy and what is the shape that is going to reduce the use of material, improve uh, the quality of the product that you have and reduce the use of labor. You mentioned deployment of product. Does that mean they can work 24 hours a day? We still need a lot of uh, oversight. So we need people controlling the printer, um, making sure that the material has the right consistency. But this is just the beginning of the automation, right? All right, so I can't work 24 hours a day yet. I need to understand why this concrete is actually different than the other concrete. How come, for instance, this one stays like this and the rest of it just fall on the floor like a blob? That's a very good question because this is a formless process, right? We, we, don't, we are not building formwork for that, right? So the same way when you're using a small 3D printer, you don't have a formwork, right? You're just building, like you have your nozzle deploying the material where the material is needed, right? And it's gotta be pumpable and it's gotta be printable at the same time, meaning that the, the, the layer number one needs to hold for the layer number two and so on, right? So that's where the material science comes in, right? That's where we needed to develop the right material in order to make this printable and not just uh, pourable, if you will. So what you're saying is I can't just go to Home Depot and buy a bunch of bags and put it through my garden hose and print away? That's correct, you cannot do that. All right, fair enough. And one of the cool things is that I think I've learned from today is that this is a very versatile product that I could use relatively easily with minimal amount of labor, comparatively minimal amount of cost that could eventually turn into 24 hours a day working cycle. At some point. Now, that's extremely important for what I'm looking for as far as a product, especially on my building. I really appreciate everything you guys have done today. And I think that I'm, I got a lot to think about, but this is one step closer for me in my challenge for the future. After the tour, I have a clear understanding of what's possible in Canada. Lee mentioned his partners have already done large scale projects in France, and I aim to check those out. Now stick around, because we're gonna be heading to a massive state of the art facility in France. I'm in like heaven, this is wild. <laughs> this is 30 hour print. Really? 30 hours? 30 hours. Like always, hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you on the next one. Sucker. You could have helped yourself. I couldn't. I got a fucking knife. This is cool as shit. What am I doing? This is stupid, by the way. This is like really dumb. Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one with my cool friend here. Sucker.